Hello, hello, hello. What's going on? What's going on? And welcome. <clears throat> if you are catching us on the replay, make sure you hashtag replay so that I know that you were here. When you hop on, let me know who you are, where you're from, so I can shout you out and say hello after the broadcast. And if you are catching us on the replay, you can skip ahead to about the minute and a half mark to get to the content. So while you are jumping on, I'm going to be sharing this out to a few of my favorite spots, and I encourage you to do the same. All right, let me um, let me get focused because y'all know what happens. If you don't know, well, <laughs> you're about to find out. <laughs> all right, make sure. Hey, hey, I got all kinds of stuff popping up over here. What is going on? Woo! All right, here we go. I got... Um, Facebook doing me a solid today. That is always fun. There we go. Ooh, I might be like cooking with gas today. Hot dog. Hey. Wow. We do. Thank you, Facebook. I sure appreciate you. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. This is awesome. Okay. Yeah, so if you never, for th those of you who are new to my broadcast, welcome. And so, you know, every now and again, Facebook pulls a fast one on me and my freaking app doesn't work. I can't share stuff out. And then I just get lost and it's just, yeah, it just don't work out. So, yep. So, hey, Miss Pat, how are you? Hey, Nakai, Nadisha. Um, okay. So let's get started with the housekeeping announcements. All right, y'all, tax season is pretty much here. <laughs> January 15th is the deadline for your Q4 estimated tax payments. If you live in areas impacted by Hurricane Florence and you had a valid extension on file, you have until January 31st to file your 2017 taxes. If you live in areas impacted by Hurricane Michael, you have until February 28th to file those taxes. And again, if you had a valid extension on fi already filed. And if you are deployed with one of the organizations assisting with those recovery efforts and you have not filed your 2017 taxes, you definitely need to reach out to the IRS, okay? So I think that is it for the housekeeping announcements. Let me do the intro and we will get down for the content for today. Welcome to Home Biz Tax Talk. My name is Lysandra Everett. I am the Home Biz Tax Lady where I help home business owners win the tax game. Home Biz Tax Talk airs Monday through Friday, nine o'clock-ish. And when you tune into my show, you're going to hear about topics that are important to the home business community. But today I want to talk about um, what I believe are the top five tax deductions that have disappeared in 2018. And it's really now starting to sink in with people. So I just kind of want to go over those. So, all right, number one is unreimbursed employee expenses, okay? So, before, prior to the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act tax reform, employees who worked from home or traveled for work, all of those types of things, um, you know, you could deduct those those expenses as a part of your itemized deductions. It was, it was something called subject to the 2% AGI floor, which means that you had your adjusted gross income and any amount over 2% of your adjusted gross income, you could deduct those expenses. Well, that is gone. And so I have a lot of people who are now, you know, realizing like how much money they actually spend for their jobs. And for 2018, it's going to be a loss. And I'm talking like to the tune of $20,000, $25,000 that people spend per year for their job. And now they can no longer take that tax deduction. And so it's really starting to hit some people, you know, at home, like, holy cow, I'm, I'm pretty much out of this money, even though it may be something, you know, required for, you know, your job or um, something that helps you like buying leads and that, that kind of thing to help you, you know, in your business and help you make more money at work, perhaps you're commission based or something like that. But the fact is that if you are an employee, those um, those expenses are no longer tax deductible for you, okay? So that's number one. Number two is moving expenses. Moving expenses are no longer tax deductible except for people who are in uh, you know, active duty military. Before, 
if you moved further than 50 miles away from your current job or what there was a you know a lot of stipulations but generally 50 mile rule okay then again that's something that you could have deducted that is no longer the case so you know in the future if you're moving for a job you need to negotiate that in your uh, in your salary package to to negotiate those moving expenses because otherwise that's something that you're going to have to pay out of pocket and it's no longer tax deductible okay exemptions personal exemptions are no longer available. With the doubling of the standard deductions, the exemptions are removed. So that extra $4,000, uh, you know, thereabouts that you were getting per person as a reduction of income is no longer available. So, you know, really when the math works out, if you have a family greater than four, you're going to lose out in this area. Now, there may be some other places where you pick up credits and whatnot, but for the most part, this is the area where people are going to lose. So that double the standard deduction, that was great. The personal exemptions are removed. So there's no more of that $4,000 per that's going to help you um, re help reduce that. Okay. Now, the next one is a medical expense deduction. Now it's not removed, but it's changing. So um, for through December 31st, 2018, you can deduct medical expenses over 7%, seven percent, seven and a half percent of your adjusted gross income. Starting January 1, 2019, that goes up to 10% of your adjusted gross income. So that means whatever your adjusted gross income is, let's say, $80,000, 10% of that is $8,000. So only medical expenses above $8,000 in this example would be tax deductible, okay? So just know <laughs> that, um, you know, hey, if you've got something that needs to be done, if you can get it done medically before December 31st, get your life, right? Because, you know, 2019, it's gonna be harder to meet that um, that tax deductible um, standard. Uh, okay. And then charitable contributions. And I want to spend a little bit of time here because, you know, I see so many people talking about the year end thing, you know, go do, you know, charitable contributions, charitable contributions. Okay. So that is to me just kind of a mixed bag. Okay. Because with the doubling of the standard deduction, there are going to be a lot fewer people who are itemizing their taxes anyway. So you're looking at a single person who's, you, you know, your standard deduction this year is going to be $12,000. So if in, if in your, um, if in your deductions, your itemized deductions, if you're close to that $12,000 mark, then charitable deductions may help you. But, you know, a lot of times it's not going to help because that's a lot because there's also a limitation as well. So the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act increased the limitation from 50% of your AGI to 60% of your AGI. Okay, again, that's great. But when you're looking at, you know, the, um, the stuff that you're donating, you know, if you're donating, you know, used stuff, whether it's furniture, you know, dishes, clothes, whatever, you're also donating them at the current value, not what you paid for them, but what would be the current value now. So that's going to be a depreciated price. It's not going to be the original uh, the original cost. So now, does that mean that you stop giving? No. Okay. But just like I said, this is going to be where, you know, people are really going to have a gut check to see if they're contributing to these charitable organizations because they really want to give or if they want it for the tax deduction. Because once a lot of people start to realize that, hey, with this doubled standard deduction, you know, I'm not itemizing anymore, then why would I give this stuff away? Okay, that's one thing. But the other thing I also encourage you to do as well is that, you know, if you're going to if you're going to donate stuff, try to sell it first and get the money for it and perhaps donate the money versus the goods itself. Right. So that's an option for you. But just know that um, that you know, with the doubling of the standard deduction, they're just going to be a lot fewer people getting any additional benefit for, um, for, for charitable contributions. Okay. That's, that's just the way it is. Okay. 
So that's it, you guys. There are a lot more things that are going on with the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, with tax reform. You know that now that we've we've gotten through the year and we're getting ready to file taxes for the first time with this tax uh, code change, that you know people are really going to start to see how it's impacting them. The you know the limitations with the state and local tax deductions. I don't I don't think people people that live in high uh, property tax states you know really got this from day one because there were states that were really trying to create some type of workaround to be able, um, you know, to have their t- the, the taxpayers in their state, you know, to create some kind of workaround so they would be exempt from this $10,000 limitations because you know what? There are places in this country where $10,000, you can, you can do that without trying hard, right? between your your state income taxes and your pay, that you're paying and your property taxes that you're paying that ten thousand dollar limitation is like is a real blow to people you know so um so I think now people are really going to start to you know be thinking about wow how this is going to impact me so one of the things I will also say to you is that be patient with your tax professional as well because um, yeah because we're gonna have to go through and really make sure that the software is doing what it's supposed to do so it might take a little bit more time to get your stuff done because you know it you know this tax reform was done in a microwave they're still talking about you know tweaking some stuff even and it's it's december and they're still talking about tweaking some stuff so um yeah but those are the main things you guys i think those are the the some of the biggest things that people are really starting to take note of you know like i said you know that property tax thing in the in the high property tax days they were on that back in 2017 um but you know but just you know the common things like the unreimbursed employee expenses like people have really realized you know now how much money they're investing in their jobs and now it's it it is no longer a benefit anymore. So, you know, people are making some decisions, right? And and on that note as well, let me talk about this. Um, You know, one of the things that people automatically think is, oh my gosh, well, since I can't, Um, since I can't deduct these employee expenses anymore, I'll just be an independent contractor. It's not that simple. There are tests that the IRS says, okay, you know, does the employer control the training? Do they, do they provide the materials? You know, really, what are the employer controls that are in this relationship? And then they, that's the determination as to whether or not you are an employee versus an independent contractor. It's not that you just get to decide that you're an independent contractor. It doesn't work that way. California, um, is, had just settled a case in April that is definitely going to make it harder for people to be independent contractors because this law says that if the person is performing the um the main function of the company then they are not they can't be independent contractors that they're employees so it's going to be harder especially in California to qualify to be an independent contractor so don't just think that you know okay well I'll just go switch and life is good it's not going to be that simple you guys so um so now like I said it's time to really take note about how much you're investing in your job and really see what you know what that looks like for you you know you're going to find out come tax time okay so that is it for today's episode of home biz tax talk again we air monday through friday nine o'clock ish and you can come here right here and book a consult if you need to get your home business questions answered all right have a great day and i'll see y'all next time bye